regarding a wise person, the person who has got steady abiding wisdom and Bhagavan gave the characteristics of a wise person in the form of self-satisfaction, complete satisfaction with oneself, being happy with oneself and thereby not having any binding desires. And because of that, there is no elation or depression on attaining favorable or unfavorable things. So he briefly talked about the Lakshana from 55 to 57. Then 58 to 68 is the topic 11 verses. He talked about the sadhana for attaining this abiding wisdom. Because that is more relevant to the sadhaka. Why? Because <clears throat> what I have to do now, that really matters. Of course, we need to have the idea of what it means to be a wise person. To some extent, we need to have the idea. And also the lakshanas of the wise person will be this guiding force for us, guidelines for us. But right now what I have to do, for that we, Bhagavan Sri Krishna gave the answer and he talked about these three sadhanas, one is Nididhyasanam, Matparaha and Dhammaha and Shamaha. In fact, Nididhyasanam, we did not talk much about it. He is going to deal with it in the sixth chapter. Right now, he is talking, he talked about Dhamma and Shama, mastery over the organs and mastery over the mind. And having completed that topic of Shama Dhamma Nididhyasanam, now he has come back to the topic of the wisdom. Because wisdom is there, then only one can have abiding wisdom. And therefore, what is the vision of a wise person that is presented here in the 69th shloka? But it is not presented in a very straight words. What, what message he wants to convey is very simple. 
in terms of vedantic teaching <coughs> it is very plain what is that that the wise person knows pratyagatma brahma he knows brahman as oneself he has got complete understanding of this ultimate reality called brahma and he looks upon the dvaitam the duality as mithya means he understands this subject object duality is because of ignorance it does not have reality so duality is not reality and non dual self i am that understanding the wise person has whereas ignorant person is not having the knowledge of this brahman what wise person knows other wise person ignorant person doesn't know what he doesn't know is brahman is limitless reality which is atma he doesn't know and what is the response of this ignorant person to duality he is highly reactive to duality he gives reality to duality and he hi- is highly active reactive to this duality so considering the duality to be reality he reacts to the duality whereas the wise person does not give reality to duality and he is indifferent or he is not impacted by this duality so he does not give us any reality to what is happening in this dualistic world and therefore he does not affect him he is indifferent to that he is unaffected by the duality like you see the movie and if you are aware that it is a movie it will not impact you but generally you are not you get carried away you get so much identified with the character and you identifies with some character and then the what is happening in the movie affects you but if you are having you are a like critic film critic your job is to write review about the movie then you you will not be carried away you will be seeing that how the acting was done how song was done how setup was there and all this you know the dialogue the delivery how was it all these things that will be your focus <laughs> therefore you will not be affected we are seeing this movie from a different angle you are seeing movie as movie but generally what happens you see the movie as a fact even though it is not so you see movie as real happening therefore you carried away in some day people say you know oh, see see how he is beating that person he is beating in movie only but see 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 how i how he is beating how can he beat like this so we give reality and therefore we get affected but one who is having the objectivity to this movie he is not affected that is the message going is being conveyed in this but bhagwan sri krishna uses a very cryptic language symbolic language and he says literal translation we had seen in the last class ya sarva bhutanam nisha what is night for all living beings means for all ignorant people in that with regard to that sanyami ye sanyami refers to a wise person because the person who has done shamadama that person alone can become dani therefore sanyami means a wise person literally sanyami means one who has got the mastery over the body mind sense complex that is sanyami wise person jagarti he is awake when all other people what other people are seeing as night in that the wise person is awake and yasyam jagrati bhutani and that regard that regarding which all the bhutas all the ignorant people are awake sa that particular situation is nisha is night munehe pasyataha for a 
वाइस पर्सन हु इज सींग द ट्रूथ दिस इज द मीनिंग सो हियर वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड सटन एग्जाम्पल विच इज गिवन सजेस्टेड इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर श्लोका टू एग्जाम्पल्स आर सजेस्टेड वन इज गिवन इन दी फर्स्ट वन इज सजेस्टेड इन दी फर्स्ट हाफ वट इज द एग्जाम्पल द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ए पर्सन ह्यूमन बींग एंड आउल यू नो आउल वॉट इज आउल वॉट इज कॉलिंग टमिल आंदे 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 आउल इन हिंदी उल्लू उल्लू बोलते हैं गुजराती देखो घुवड़ घुवड़ उल्लू हिंदी उल्लू बोलते हैं उल्लू का पट्टा ऐसा बोलते हैं सो उल्लू आंदई आंदई ना सो वॉट इज द स्पेशलिटी द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द ह्यूमन बींग्स एंड द आउल ह्यूमन बींग्स जनरली ही इज अवेक अवेयर ऑफ वॉट इज हैपनिंग ड्यूरिंग डे टाइम सी इज एक्टिव अवेयर ऑफ ऑल हैपनिंग्स इन डे टाइम ही इज अवेयर ऑफ डे लाइट डे लाइट एंड वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन डे लाइट वेर एज आउल इज वॉट डे टाइम इज अस्लीप इनएक्टिव generally there are some variety how i saw that there are so many variety but on some variety what we are aware of what is well known so the owl is inactive it does not have awareness of what is happening during day time and night time they are awake night time they are awake and the human beings are generally not awake so here night is a comparison for brahma what is the characteristic of night night is characterized by darkness so night is characterized by darkness means night is characterized by the situation covered by darkness so night represents that which is covered by dark and for ignorant people deluded people brahman is like night what is night night is that which is covered by darkness so for ignorant people brahman is covered by darkness of ignorance ya nisha sarva bhutana so brahman which is nisha covered by ignorance darkness of ignorance sarva bhuta naam for all ignorant people brahman is covered by darkness of ignorance for all ignorant people tasyam with regard to that brahman which is comparable to night sanyami wise person jagarti wise person is awake awake means what he knows brahman very well how does he know he knows brahman as the only reality and as oneself so brahman with regard to which all ignorant people are in darkness with regard to that brahman the wise people are awake fully awake they know brahman very well very well means what as oneself very well not as an object only way of knowing brahman is claiming oneself to be brahman so the wise person claims is brahman to be oneself that is the meaning of tasyam jagarti sanyami all right so this is one thing by this first half what is the fact revealed that ignorant people deluded people common man is not aware of not knowing this brahman which is reality it is like darkness for ignorant people darkness is that which is covered by there sorry night it is like night means that which is covered by darkness so brahman is night for ordinary people the brahman is night means what brahman is covered by darkness of ignorance 
and with regard to that brahman sanyami wise person is awake means wise person knows brahman very well that is one thing now second half what is said yasyam bhutani jagrati with regard to which all living beings all ignorant people jagrati jagrati is a plural jagrati jagrutah jagrati so all living beings all ordinary people are all ignorant people are awake to whichever dreamful night so duality is compared to dreamful night so night which is having the duality for the ignorant people this duality is night where dreams are there so this ignorant people are highly active yasyam with regard to which duality the duality which is like dreams in that with regard to that this all ignorant people are highly active they are well informed about this dvaitam not only well informed they are responding they are reacting very forcefully very aggressively to this duality and with regard to that duality in which or with regard to which the ignorant people are highly active is nisha he is like night and night has got another feature one feature we saw covered by darkness another feature is inactivity so that duality is characterized by or responded by this indifference in the form of indifference by wise people so night is generally characterized by non activities and for a wise people this duality i am this world is like this this type of duality subject object duality is like night and what is the here what feature is highlighted here this inactivity sa nisha that is like night for pashyato munehe for a wise person by that what is suggested is that duality is subject object duality with regard to which ignorant people are highly active highly reactive with regard to that duality the wise person's outlook is that it is nisha it is also he says that this nisha this duality is like nisha means it is based on avidya based on the ignorance and it doesn't deserve any reaction because reaction comes when you are seeing the duality with the sense of reality whereas the wise person knows this is duality is mithya unreal and therefore sa nisha so sa nisha means the wise person does not see duality with the sense of reality so final meaning is this the wise for wise person duality is like night means duality is not seen with the sense of du- uh, reality and it is not responded to with the sense of reality and therefore there is no reaction or conclusion about oneself based on the happening in duality so the wise person is like a person who is sleeping without dream non dreaming sleep he has whereas the this ignorant person is like a dreamer who is asleep and in that sleep again he wakes up half he awakes half awake he is so the ignorant person is like a dreamer and the wise person is like the one who is sleeping without dream and when you are sleeping without dream there is no response whereas the dream you have got so much reaction and thus the second half is saying that for ignorant person duality is taken as real 
and by a wise person duality is understood to be unreal and by this shloka what is the final message conveyed wise person knows brahma satyam jagan mithya that is the message we may wonder that what is this brahma satyam jagan mithya look quite different and what is said here they what is night for others is the day time for the wise person what is day time for wise person is night for others <clears throat> and what is uh, what is the uh, what is day time for others is a night for wise person and vice versa so how this message and this connected but if you analyze that is the message here that wise person is knowing this that i alone am reality i advaita brahma alone is reality this duality is unreal whereas ignorant person what he thinks this duality alone is real brahman i don't know means brahman is real or unreal he is he is indifferent or at least he is ignorant and that is why the wise person's vision and ignorant person's perception cannot be combined and the activities which are done based on the ignorant person's perception cannot be there for a wise person so wise person bashakara derives that idea that wise person is free from all the activities because for activities you need to give reality to the duality and he is free from this sense of reality and therefore he does not have the activities in conventional sense all his activities are called karma bhasaha means what he is as though doing he is a semblance of karma not real karma that is what is going to be said in the fifth chapter pashyan shrunvan sprushan jagran ashnan gachan swapan swasan pralapan visrujan etc indriyani indriyarthesh vartante naiva kinchit karomi iti so he has this vision that i am akarta this dvaita me is only pratiti is just appearance of myself and he remains in this wisdom and thus the gnana nishtha is the one who gives reality to you only brahman which is one self and does not give reality to dvaita all right so by this shloka the vision of a wise person was presented what is his vision brahma satyam jagat mithya now in the next shloka the fullness of a wise person people may ask this that what do we get out of this vedanta class and all this atmik dhanam brahma dhanam what do we get out of it generally people think that is uh, this will not make any difference if somebody ask you that why are you going to anekatti oh you say if you may if you say that i am going for bhagavad gita class bhagavad gita class for what oh we get uh, self knowledge then the question is self knowledge what is self knowledge and then you think oh my god what i have been studying for 20 years i have to tell this fellow in uh, in 5 minutes and that without also any effort he will get still you have to give some answer so you said uh, self knowledge is i am self and uh, everything is mithya then that person will say that uh, okay so what happened okay you know now suppose you know you are atma everything is mithya so what happened you did you get any promotion by that did you get more business more profit did you get anything what okay i also know atma okay now i will say atma is satyam my vidhi is mithya so what easy answer no what he will not further discussion hey anait is the ashram no food is very good so every sunday i go for lunch then a further question will not be <laughs> that is easy answer so there is a lunch nice uh, lunch is there prasadam also good so we go for that so you also want to come he will come and if you say vedanta class he may not come but if you say the lunch nice and good ambience is there pick up deer all this that, that's good i that people will understand that answer this you give they will not understand whether they understand or not at least you understand what this self knowledge is going to do this self knowledge 
makes me free from the sense of limitation. I own up the fullness of myself. That is the benefit, and that is talked about in the next sloka. Apurya mana machala pratishtam. शांति मोति न काम कामी सो हियर the benefit of this abiding wisdom is talked about and to explain the benefit of wisdom in the form of fullness the example of the ocean is given and what is the example that ocean is supposed to be full by itself full and complete we say They are generally we use the full and complete. Full and complete, right? Different is there. Difference is there. Full means whatever can come has come. That is full. Like in your petrol, you know, tank, uh, car tank. So you say what petrol tank is full. Means what? Whatever petrol can come, that much has come. Not that complete that whatever this petrol bunk has come. that is called full full means the presence of something that can be there presence. that can be contained in a given thing <coughs> whereas complete means nothing is missed out that is called complete when you say this job is complete means that nothing remains to be done so here what we want to say that the wise person is full means what all possibility is there in human um, potential human life he has attained and nothing remains to be done nothing remains to be achieved he doesn't think oh i got all the sh- human potential but what about the deva potential what about this uh, gandharva potential what about the elephant potential that also is not that all are included in it that is called complete so he is full and complete and to explain his fullness and completeness the example of the ocean is given the ocean is full brimful and still rivers keep entering into the ocean but the entry or non entry of the ocean, the rivers do not affect the fullness of the ocean the rivers decide that will go on strike still ocean will be complete ocean will be full so ocean is complete full and complete by itself and ocean does not depend upon the entry of the rivers into itself to become full and ocean is not disturbed by the absence nor it is overwhelmed by the presence of as the ocean is not disturbed by the absence of the rivers and ocean is not overflowing elated by the entry of the rivers so rivers entry a rivers non entry do not affect the fullness of the ocean ocean is full and complete by itself ocean does not depend upon the rivers for its fullness and the entry and non entry of the rivers do not create elation overflowing or depression running out of water that doesn't happen in relative sense a little bit will be happening relative sense similarly the wise person is like ocean means he appreciates himself to be full and complete 
by itself. I am purna without any happening. I am purna by myself. And he does not depend upon any external happening for his purnatvam, for his fullness. And <coughs> if sense objects enter into him, he is not elated. If sense objects do not come, he is not depressed. So he or she is full by oneself and the entry or non-entry of the sense objects do not affect his fullness. And here the wise person is compared to the ocean, sense objects are compared to the rivers. And entry of the rivers is comparable to the entry of the sense objects to the wise person. With this background, we will see the words, the words of the verse. Apaha pravishanti. Waters enter. Enter into what? Samudram. The ocean. What type of ocean? Achala pratishtam. Achala pratishtam means steady without any disturbance. Without any ups and down. Achala pratishtam. Well settled, steady. It is called achala pratishtam. Just as waters enter into the ocean, which is Achala Pratishtam, well settled, steady ocean, which is Apurya Madam, which is full all around. In the, it is full all around, means it is complete by itself. It is full by itself. So, just as the waters, I mean the rivers, enter into the ocean, which is full by itself. And by this, what is suggested? The, the entry or non-entry of the outside waters do not make any difference. Without the entry of the outside waters also, ocean is full by itself. Yadvatu, just as this is the case of the waters entering into the ocean, Tadvatu, similarly, Yadvat means just as, just as the waters into, enter into the ocean and they do not create any elation or depression in the ocean. Similarly, Sarve Kamaha, all the sense objects, Pravishanti Yam, enter into which wise person? Means the sense objects will, will be coming. Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, they will be coming to the wise person. Because wise person also has got Prarabdha. And as long as Prarabdha is there, situations will keep happening. And Prarabdha cannot be uniform. And therefore, there will be various situations. So sometimes favorable objects, sometimes unfavorable objects. When favorable objects come, then Tam yam pravishanti that time the ocean the, the ocean like wise person does not get elated or depressed means the condition of a wise person when the sense objects enter into him will be similar to the condition of the ocean when the waters outside waters enter into the ocean and what was the example just as the ocean remains full irrespective of the entry and non-entry of the objects, the wise person remains full irrespective of the entry and non-entry of the sense objects. Saha, that person. Such a person alone, Shanti Mapnoti, attains Shanti, abiding peace. And relatively speaking, when you do not have dependence upon the world to be happy, then only you can be peaceful. If you are highly dependent upon the world to be happy, then the world is full of variable factors. Today they are okay, tomorrow not okay. Suppose you depend upon weather, then every day weather will not be convenient or comfortable. It changes. 
or anything you are dependent upon your spouse mood depending upon the, how your spouse is you feel happy or unhappy then your spouse mood is also is subject to change share market you are dependent you cannot have peace so as long as your fullness depends upon on the external factors shanti cannot be there means when you feel when you have that this type of mind if i get this i will be fulfilled if that mindset is there then shanti will not be there why because you cannot call all the shots so many things can happen any times anything can happen all of a sudden some cyclone is there all of a sudden some earthquake is there so many things railway accident we saw that you know people were coming from odisha to this chennai or chennai to they all of a sudden accident died they must have planned so much so if you are dependent upon the external world for your happiness fullness then shanti cannot be there whereas this person has got internal source of the fullness therefore that person shantim abiding peace and here shanti represent moksha samsara nivrutti maapnoti that person alone attains moksha ha jivan mukti and later on videya mukti that person alone attains na kama kami kama kami here first kama word means the objects kami means desires a person who is desirous keeps desiring various objects for his fullness that person cannot attain shanti disturbance guaranteed when you are dependent upon the world to be happy then disturbance is guaranteed shanti cannot be there you can see in your life less dependent you are more shantam more calm calm and quiet you can be more dependent you are more disturbed you will be nowadays you know our civilization is what we create more and more factors of this dependence earlier when electricity come came then people must be using only during night time 1 hour 2 hours night and then early morning 1 or 2 hours now we require light 24 hours if light is not there so much disturbed cell phone came when it came it was very the charges were very expensive 6 rupees per minute and incoming call outgoing call both were charged so people were using very sparingly dependence was very less now so much dependence so what we are doing we are creating more and more factors of dependence for our fullness sense of it very skull at least temporary feel a uh, feeling of fullness i feel i am complete only when this happens i am complete if that happens so more and more factors of this dependence are there and therefore what more and more avenues for disturbance is there are there you see more we are dependent then probability will be more if you are dependent upon five factors then probability is less if you are dependent upon 20 fat factors your probability of getting disturbed will be more and so kama kami one who is dependent upon the sense objects to be fulfilled to have the sense of fulfillment that person is called kama kami that na shanti maapnoti he does not attain peace he will be disturbed and he will make others also disturbed so swayam disturb and anyan disturbayati so na kama kami shanti maapnoti all right now in so in this shloka what is the benefit of this wisdom this abiding wisdom benefit is that you do not have to depend upon anyone else for your fullness for your happiness what a big relief one can have that i do not require anyone or anything to be happy i may require food not to be happy 
food I need for sustaining the body, water I need to quench the thirst, and air I need to breathe, place I need to stay. But nothing is required to be happy. If food did not come, then there will be some discomfort but not unhappy. There is a difference between the comfort and happiness. There is a difference between this discomfort and unhappiness. So the wise person may have some discomfort. When food is not there, he may have some discomfort. There is acid, acid will be active, so there will be some discomfort. But he did not conclude himself to be unhappy or happy. If something comes, therefore I am happy, that is not. Whereas this ignorant person, his mood is highly volatile, like share market sometimes. Highly volatile share market. Similarly, his mood is highly volatile. More moody you are, means more immaturity there is. The person is, is, is mature means he is relatively steady. He is, is deviation mood swinging will be very, very less. He is relatively steady. Somebody says, Swamiji, I don't have mood swing because I am always depressed. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, we are not talking about that person. That is fully samsari. So, whereas a person who has got mood swing is immature. And more you, you become mature, then what happens? You see that really speaking, the external things do not make me happy. What makes me happy is my outlook to the external things. And therefore, you will have more and more abiding peace. And once you attain that I am the source of happiness, then you are always happy. You are always having this sense of fulfillment. There may be some discomfort, there may be some pain, but there is no conclusion that I am samsari, I am suffering. That will not be that. I am very unlucky fellow. I am so much suffering. Nobody cares for me. This is typical samsari description. I am so much suffering. Nobody knows. Nobody cares for me. I am very unlucky. This is samsari lakshana. Sadhaka's lakshana will be what? There are ups and downs based on the prarabdha. I will try to see it as prasada. That is a sadhaka structure. Whereas Gdani Purusa, he says it doesn't matter. Whatever happens in the anatma, I am full and complete by myself. Let things happen, anything in the world, let anything happen in the body, and let even anything happen in the mind. I continue to be complete. And thus, the wise person, because of his wisdom, he has got abiding peace, abiding fullness that was talked about. <coughs> now, in the next two slokas, there is a conclusion of this chapter, the topic of wise person. Vihaya kaman yasarvan Vihaya kaman yasarvan Kuman sharati nispruhaha Nirmamo nirahankaraha Sashanti madhi gachati So Bhavan Shankaracharya ji connecting with this shloka he said Yaspa deva taspat Since this is so means since he has discovered inner fullness therefore Sarvat Kaman Vihaya having dropped all the Kamas, having abandoned all the binding desires. So what is the connection with the previous shloka? Since he has discovered the fullness within himself, therefore what? Sarvan Kaman Vihaya. Upakrama Upasamara is there. He started with this Prajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan Parthamano Gatan Atman Yeva Atmana Tushtaha. So Atman Yeva Atmana Tushtaha was explained by Apuryamana Machala Pratishtam. 
and here that again we have prajahati yada kamadi is concluded that he becomes free from any binding desires binding desires means the desires whose fulfillment makes me feel elated and whose non fulfillment makes me depressed disturbed that is called binding desire the desire when fulfilled i am elated and if not fulfilled i am depressed those desire are called binding desire So one has to see what is my binding desire. Is it for a sadhaka? It is a good introspection. What is my binding desire? Some people will say, "Swami ji, my binding desire is that my son. I wish my son to behave properly, my daughter to behave properly, my spouse to behave properly." Some people are a little bit, uh, you know, not local affairs. They don't. Swami ji, I binding desire is my government should behave properly. <laughs> The world leaders should behave properly. One has to see that what is binding desire. As Swami ji, my binding desire is that my neighbor should behave properly. He makes a lot of noise when I am doing chanting. He is uh, he is putting the TV very high volume. One has to see what is my binding desire. The wise person is free from binding desires. He can have some preferences. But does not have binding desires. He, if some people are making noise, he, he said, "I am the sakshi of this noise." So he, he has got always ways to handle the situation in a very mature way, mature and compassionate way, and that's what he does. Vihaya kavan. He is free from all binding desires. But as a sadhaka, one has to see the beauty of this. how how great it can be that i do not have any binding desires one has to really fall in love with that freedom from binding desires if you are having that values of me that binding desires are not there means passion is not there and what is the life without passion you are you keep on talking about dispassion 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 whereas i am a man of passion or a woman of passion and therefore one has to see the beauty of dispassion and especially this is a the highest degree of dispassion highest version of dispassion it is not like a, this viraga kaha that is sadhana chatushtha sampatti rupa viraga it is not talked about it is an outcome of wisdom the ka vihaya kama nya sarvan is not a sadhana for a wise person it is an outcome of his wisdom i do not <clears throat> need anything to be happy why should i be disturbed by any happening or not happening and therefore in this manner sarvan kaman vihaya and uman that person nispruha charati he moves about without any spruha so here it may look like a repetition vihaya so, kaman sarvan and nispruha for that shankaracharya ji says nispruha means that whatever is required even for the survival of the body for that also craving is not that anxiety is not that people say that swami ji when you will not be able to talk then what will happen to you now people are giving you bhiksha dakshina etc but when you will not be able to talk no you don't have even pension scheme that some uh, here now pension i am giving pension people will not give so, so one or two days they will say oh swami ji you are not well not well oh okay okay so <clears throat> if you need anything please tell me that's only people say this this is a good etiquette so swami so what will happen so what about your food swami ji what will happen so that type of this craving also is not that let me do something so that i will get pension throughout the life i mean throughout my life and uh, my food and shelter will be taken care of that is true also is not that so when he said ka sarvan kaman 
he does not have any binding desire for any particular setup or particular objects but here nispruha so, so, means he is free from even the craving for the things which are necessary for the maintenance of the body what is the wise person's response to this he said if body has a prarabdha to get food it will get it any pity is not there even though people are around and some people cannot eat you know because of the health condition they cannot eat all the tube it goes even though people are there money is there but still you can't eat if prarabdha is there wherever you are this food will come he has complete he has surrendered his body to ishvara who is manifesting in the form of prarabdha and therefore worries are not there spruha is not there that oh, what what food food no there some people that the life without food means day without food means what is unimaginable and that is also not there this spruha and nirmamaha he does not have mamakara with regard to anything this is my ashram these are my disciples some of them people are very possessive about the disciples also why did you talk to my disciples or they will scold the disciple itself because that person they cannot scold he said why did you go to him am i not teaching you well am i not here teaching you how to do sadhana why you have to go anywhere else possessiveness the people are possessive of their children people are possessive of disciples so wise person doesn't have this he said if any disciple is going to somebody else good so i don't have to talk to him <laughs> it's okay so he is happy encouraging the you know, read the course interview that's what we do we tell people why don't you go there and study we tell like this in the interview we tell that uh, you have that swami ji so you can go and study with him why not so that should not be any mamakara that we alone can do it we are only great our disciples our ashrams this <clears throat> our uh, books some people i was told that one one person who is a well known speaker he will decide the topic of his text talk based on the books he has available he will ask the bookstore people that uh, nowadays which books is not going well all right sir this sir okay so next series of talk will be on that so that books will be sold what a thing you know my books should be sold mamakara is not there that this is all our mamakara my name should come my disciples should do my children should do this or my children <coughs> should behave in this manner mamakara that is not there. with reference to anything because mamakara is just notional really speaking nothing belongs to you you think it belongs to you thing doesn't have that idea that one one swami ji some person said nicely he said you have identification with chappals this is my chappal chappal doesn't have that that fellow is my master see whoever where he comes go along with it <laughs> so mamakara is just notional in your mind see how our mind works see somebody was having some pen in your thing it is his pen and now he gives you he gives you that okay this i thought of giving you this pen to you so now immediately your attitude to the pen changes oh that is my pen and by chance that person so oh, sorry i gave you by mistake you know i was supposed to give other then you feel loss sense of loss even though it is just one day that pen remained with you but you already developed that pamakara notional loss loss in share market also they call it notional loss means what you you sold some share and after it that share went up so you feel what oh i lost money what loss you already got profit for the selling but still person feels what yeah. so all these are notional so with reference to so many things we have got mamakara really speaking nothing belongs to you you see what what you can completely claim as yours nothing even your body you cannot claim as yours because body is given to you 
like this this classroom is given to us can you claim it is my classroom i do cannot claim nothing you can claim still we claim and based on this notional claim we suffer wise person is free from this mamakara and why we have got mamakara we require this mamakara we, we feel the need for something to be possessed by we because we are not happy with what we are so we require so many supports to feel good i have this wealth i have this um, children i have this relatives therefore i am happy i want some supports outside therefore mamakara wise person doesn't require therefore nirmamaha nirahankara he is free from this ego what type of ego that i am a wise person that ego also is not there the wise person doesn't claim himself to be a wise person So, if somebody tells that uh, Swami ji, all of us are ignorant people. <laughs> Suppose they say, then if person is a wise person, he will not say, "Oh, why is calling me? Is including me?" You said we wise person. Why you said uh, Swami ji, we all disciples are wise, are ignorant people. Why he should include me? If, if that thought comes, means he is an ignorant person only. If somebody calls you, you are an ignorant person, you are agnani, and you feel disturbed, means. You are agnani. If somebody calls you ignorant person, and if you feel disturbed, it is confirmed that you are agnani. If somebody introduces a wise person, oh, you are a very learned person, you are an enlightened person, you feel very elated, and you want it to record and be viewed, then <laughs> you are an ignorant person. When you depend upon someone to call you a wise person for your fulfillment they think that so wise person doesn't have any ego based on anything he doesn't say i have got a big ashram i have got uh, this wisdom i am a scholar i am this i am this is not that i remember puja swami ji in one video i had said he said i am a normal person it the two normal he said two normal means there is no anxiety or there is no craving to be called that is special or something tom like any but the value for speciality when i go there people should get up when i go that they should give me way that that is ahankara means i am a special person so when i go people should see move move away give me space that is ahankara that is not that so nirahankara and such a person shanti madigachati that person attains shanti hi samsar nivruttim adigachati hi attains abiding peace he attains the freedom from samsara thus the wise person is free from all binding desires even craving for the things required for the sustenance of the body And free from abhamakara and ahankara, and such a wise person attains moksha. We will see in the next class. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamada Yapurnami Sushyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Namah.